ROM. Now we have the bus interface unit which is in connected directly with the system bus. Then the main memory is also connected with the system bus which is the ROM section. This main memory is the ROM section and cache memory is the RAM section that is why we can say that cache memory is always closer to the CPU section. Then the system bus is connected with the IO interface and IO interface is connected with all other input output devices. That is the main diagram of this computer. CPU processing instructions. First we need to fetch. Fetch means to attempt the data. Then decode instruction means to decode the data to generate the original data. Then load means to ready to read the instruction. Execute the instruction means working on the instruction. And now finally store means store the result in some place or to display the result in your uh, output section. So those are the functions and processes of CPU instructions. Those points are important for your examination. Here we will discuss on some speed up techniques. Here we have objectives and descriptions. Here we have the cache memory. The cache memory is more fast than any memory. In this section, it provides the CPU the fastest access to the instruction, which is generated by the cache memory. The cache memory takes the data from the main memory and serves it quickly to the CPU section. But if, the, if you turn the power off, then the cache memory will be empty. Now, the pipelining section. The pipelining section is introduced to do the parallel works because if you do the work uh, parallelly instead of serial, that time the parallel work can, uh, can consume less amount of time. That's why the work can go very much faster. You can have a snap of this section. Now we are in the cache memory section. In this section we can see that a cache memory without pipelining looks like this one. First it fetch the extension, then decode it, then it do the other works which are I was described in this section. First fetch, then decode, then load, execute and then store. So by this section we can say that first one is for fetching, then decoding, then, then this one is for loading, then execution and then the result output. After doing all of those works, then the task 2 is to begin. That in this section, from uh, suppose we are taking those as seconds, from, from second 1 to second 5, every second we do only one task. But if we introduce to pipeline, section by pipeline processing we can go with them by se uh, in the same times that's why I can I want to say that if you use the pipelining section you can do the work of fetching decoding and some other stuffs at the same time suppose you are fetching data number one at second number one but when you are in uh, time 2 then you can decode the first one but you can easily fetch this data in this section and then when you are on the third time uh, time cycle then you can easily uh, load the first uh, instruction and that time you can decode the second instruction and in this section you can easily fetch the data 3 that is why pipelining is uh, very quick than the uh, than the previous method. Here are some difference between sequential instruction and pipelining instruction. You can have a snap of this one. This one is a, a mid-level important question for your examination.
system architecture this one is a diagram of your system architecture here we have the main memory then the input output ports are connected with the bus and this bus is connected with the main memory and this main memory is connected with the central processing unit CPU with a system bus this is the system architecture Here we have written some descriptions on these topics. Here are also some description of the previous diagram. Now, microcontroller. In this diagram, you can easily understand what the microcontroller is. You can see here we have a boundary. This one. In this one, we have the input output ports some input output ports the RAM the ROM ROM is the main memory RAM is the cache memory and the CPU section those all are combined in one set this instruction set is known as microcontroller because this only chipset works like a whole computer that is why it is known as microcontroller the example of microcontroller is camera, washing machine. The main features of this microcontroller is that microcontroller can do one type of task or two type of task or that type uh, type of task are uh, defined for the uh, for for this material. That I mean that the camera can only take photos, but if you have a computer, you can do much more things. But a camera cannot do uh, the, the much uh, output of li as like as the computer that is why camera is based on the microcontroller and the personal computer or laptops are based on the microprocessor now we are in the CPU organization section in this section we have some points written about CPU organization. You can go through them. By this diagram, we can see that CPU is having instruction from the main memory by one direction or unidirection and sending data and receiving data by bidirectional data bus. And in this diagram too, we can see that in this main memory section, we have the external memory section, which is divided into cache memory, which is CM and main memory which is MM cache memory is the RAM section and main memory is the ROM section here are the instructions are passing and here are in in between line the data are passing CPU organization we have already know how the CPU works first it fast the data then decode it then goes for the execution section here is the flowchart first we need to begin then are there any instructions wait for the instruction if there is an instruction then go fetch the data and execute the extension and then again check is there any instruction if no then go to the beginning stage and if yes then go to the loop again that is how the PC or computer works this is a flowchart of how the computer works and fetch and execute the data and instructions here we have some descriptions on the PC which is program controller or counter and we have already discussed about those topics in previous lectures here we have the architecture of extensions in this section we have addresses addresses are address lines and addresses in memory sections those addresses defines the address of the element now additional data instruction and address types additional data instruction and address types are 
which data are inputted and outputted are known as the additional data and address lines and address sections denotes that where the data would be stored and how the data would be replied from that space space specific space now we are in the program control stack is to control the program section this stack is situated uh, in CPU section to control the program queue and uh, to control the program stack by that denotes how uh, after this program A is running then the program B will come this uh, sequence will be maintained by the program control stack sorry now data representation in this section we have firstly the information information is divided into instructions and data instructions are what to do that means add multiplication those are instructions and separately the data are uh, 5 4 6 7 those are the data those data can be divided into two types numbers and non numbered data uh, suppose your name is x so you are a non number data and your you have uh, 5 uh, 100 rupees so 5 is the number yeah, so 500 is the number the number can be divided into two points one is fixed point and another one is the floating point fixed point means your uh, fixed point is divided into two parts one is binary and another one is the decimal and floating points is also divided into binary and decimals binary means the 0 1 section and decimals the 1 2 3 4 5 those are decimals those are the same in floating section that means you have a dotted point that means 1.6 1.7 those are the floating points and the fixed points are 1 2 3 4 now here are the difference between the fixed point numbers and the floating points numbers Fixed points are for the hardware section and floating points are for the software sections because you cannot have a fixed, uh, you cannot have a floating amount of hardware. The fixed point numbers allows the limitation of range but floating numbers doesn't. Fixed points is as a unambiguous but it is an ambiguous on the floating point section. Some advantages and disadvantages are given here of fixed point and floating point. Here is the word length. When n equals to 4, we can enable the uh, sequence as flow. That means as n bit word allows up to 2 to the power n different item representation it ha uh, in this section we have 0 that in binary we can write it as 0 0 0 0 we want to write 1 in binary which is 0 0 1 it goes up to 9 In this section, we have simply discussed about IEEE 754 standard, which is a 32 bit floating point number format. In this section, 8 bit expands and 23 bit is for. Twenty-three bit is for a uh, fractional point of sign magnitude binary instructions with hidden bits. Here are some formulas given. Now this question is very important for your exam point of view. What is the difference between the RIS and SIS? RIS is the reduced instruction set of computer and SIS is for the complex instruction. It is used in RIS is used in Apple and 
uh, Intel and AMD use the sys section. Risk is first and sys is slow.